Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back with another animation analysis video and today we're going to be taking a look at a bit of a surprise. I honestly did not expect this. I don't think anybody really did and I didn't expect it all to drop as quickly as it did. But today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new global first physical Dokkan Fest Rose Goku Black. Obviously, when it comes down to it, right, we did know that there was going to be a global first before the sync. We didn't know when it was going to happen, what it was going to happen for. A lot of people assumed it was going to be the Tanabata LR that they were going to bring up early and then release it later on JP because then that would actually help the global sync schedule, but instead it ended up being Rosé. So I don't know how this is going to contribute to <laughs> global syncing up with JP. That'll be kind of interesting to see, but... Regardless of the matter, we're going to take a look at Goku Black's animations. Now, there has been a lot of talking about these animations on Twitter.com and in the community. And you know, whenever there's a lot of talk about the funny PNGs moving around on the screen, you know, you know, you know your boy has to get in on the conversation. So... Let's go ahead and talk about this here. By the way, I apologize if my voice sounds so weird. I literally just woke up and decided to film this video. For this video, we do have a couple of things queued up here, but a nice thing that we do have is we do have some frame-by-frame -frame references from the boy iKevinX. Granted, it is from the live stream. Unfortunately, um, he didn't have one at the time of me recording this video for the full animations that they put out a couple hours later because I think he went to bed. Um, but yeah, since it's 1 a.m., there you go. <laughs> but we do have these for some of the animations. So let's go ahead and walk through these real quick and don't worry we'll talk about those two other tabs up at the top uh when we actually get to it why am i going to uh two times speed that's not what i want i want loop there we go all right so obviously a lot of people have been discussing these and kind of saying that they feel like they're sort of not up to snuff and um you know not very good in a lot of areas some of them are better than others there's some things that don't look as clean i know a lot of people have been saying oh man well this is gonna look better in two times speed or what have you right so we'll kind of do it as we go through the video but i also do want to watch this through one time through in two times speed because i understand the mentality of that right and I do agree with certain animations, it certainly looks better in 2 times speed, but a lot of the time I honestly don't think it makes that much of a difference. Look at the funny boys coming down. Now, my overall thoughts before we kind of get in here, because obviously you guys know that I like to, you know, give you my thoughts in the beginning and then see if they change um, as we go through the video. I love that sprite, by the way, it's so funny. At the moment, I absolutely agree. What were they cooking in the kitchen with these animations? Yeah, uh, as unfortunate as it is, I definitely don't think that they did the boy justice. Ironic, considering Rose loves justice. But um, I, I don't think that they did a very good job with these, if I'm being honest with you. I feel like they could have been so much better than they currently are. And it's really a shame that I'm saying that because... When it comes to these animations, let's watch it in the two times speed. When it comes to these animations, right? Obviously, they should be good regardless, right? Because it's just a brand new Dokkan Fest character. But especially it being a global first, and especially it being a Goku Black, which we have not gotten a Goku Black as a brand new like premium unit in, I believe, four years. And obviously, you know, above all that too... He is a fan favorite character, right? He is, you know, one of people's favorite characters from Dragon Ball Super. I'd say he's probably like, if they ran a, a poll, right, he would definitely be top five. So it's kind of a shame to see them do the boy dirty and not to mention, right, this kind of, uh, you know, would tell me that we're not going to get a new Rosé for a while either, which is a little bit unfortunate. And not to mention, I know people have been saying he's not that good kid wise either bro how do you make a unit where the kit is not good and the animations aren't good that that's crazy to me so i guess i shouldn't say not good because i don't think that these animations are absolutely terrible we're gonna go through them in the slow-mo now i just think that they're 
definitely not up to snuff. Like, I think the easiest thing that I can say about these before we get in, right, like my kind of, you know, summary of my thoughts at the moment, is I swear that this is a unit from a couple years ago that they had these animations in the vault, and then they just never released it, and they were like, oh, we want to release something cool for the Global First, so grab those Rosé animations we had sitting in the back hard drive, right? I'm sure that's not actually what happened, but... It definitely feels like that either that's the case or they had the B team working on this one. Because every time I look at these animations, I swear, there's an A team for Dokkan Animations that's working on the big boy stuff for the year. And there's a B team that's working on the animations that works for just like the in-between Dokkan Fest for the year. I don't know if that's the case either, but it just definitely kind of feels like that from just being an observer, right? Alright, so let's get into it here. So... We first have this shot of Rosé dashing in, which I think looks pretty good. One thing that I will say is that they definitely did a very good job emulating the art style of the Goku Black arc, right? And I, I know that's going to be ironic because I know a lot of people will be like, oh, well, you know, they're emulating the stinky quality of, uh, you know, DBS, which I know definitely there is maybe some of that in there. But um, I mean, like, obviously the visual style of like, you know, the colors and the line work and the shading and all that good stuff. So they definitely did a pretty good job emulating all of that. So obviously we have Goku Black um, coming in this initial shot, right? This looks pretty good. Nothing really to complain about here. Um, we then have the boy come through and punch a couple times. This looks okay, right? It is definitely nothing crazy. And it is a little bit more of a far away sprite. So, you know, it kind of makes sense that obviously it just looks like rapid fire punches and kicks. But I feel like it could definitely look a little bit better. I mean, obviously. And that's another thing with these animations. I swear there's so many shots where they do it from far away. That's why I really want to look at the comparison to some of this stuff because I swear they just do it from far away sometimes just so that they can spend less resources and money on these type of shots. Because sometimes Dokkan does these far away shots when in the anime it's a little bit more zoomed in. But as he kicks Goku away, there is a little bit of minimal movement there, which is pretty nice. But you instantly have this transition to this, right? There is no in-between of pose change right where he's like putting his leg down you know changing his hands i guess the implication is that because you can't see his other arm that then holds the key blast later it's like then being charged behind him but i feel like that's a little bit of a stretch right you do have him lean down and then fire off the blast i guess we're firing off the blast this pose change is a little bit more acceptable but i still feel like they could have had some animation of him bringing his hand forward to throw the blast i do like the shape of the blast obviously it's a little bit more unique and the key definitely does look pretty good um, in this section here. Now, I know... <laughs> oh, man. This has been a shot, right? This whole sequence that we're about to watch has been a shot that people have really not been happy with. So, first of all, before we even, like, look at anything here, right? Let's go to the most close-up of this. So, why is he holding his hands like that? <laughs> this is, like... He's trying to do the generic, like, a Dragon Ball power-up pose where they kind of stand with their arms outspread, like, flexing a little bit. But his arms are, like, too close into his body. Like, I don't know. With, combined with the expression and the pose of his arms, he looks like a little kid who's about to get ice cream for the ice cream truck. <laughs> like, what actually is this pose? You know what I mean? It's not good. And not to mention... Where is the detail on the clothing? This is a shot that they should be showing all the different folds of Rosé's gi, right? There's a bunch of different, obviously, like, crease lines in the gi, because obviously it's fabric, not to mention in the pants. Granted, the pants do have a little bit more shadows, but it almost looks like somebody took away all of the line detail, like they erased it on purpose. Like, it's a super simplistic version of his outfit. It's so weird. But anyway... As this shot progresses, right, we then get the power-up. So, already this is looking a little bit weird, but we have the pink glow come from the bottom, which does look pretty cool, I will admit. Um, and we then have the aura surround my boy, right? This looks uh, very okay in terms of the effects. They basically just kind of copy-paste some different, like, swirly shapes on top of him 
A lot of other Dokkan animations do a really good job when a character is transforming of making it look like that the aura is actually surrounding them and engulfing them, right? And, you know, kind of moving behind them in a way more dynamic way. But by golly, this quite literally just looks like they paste it on top of the sprite and they're like, oh, and now he's Rosé. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so weird. And not to mention, his expression here is also just like, what is bro doing? <laughs> like, I know he's supposed to be gritting his teeth, but it just looks really strange. At least the aura itself does look really good, right? I think there's no denying that the actual Rosé aura on him looks great. I love the card art for this guy. At least, thankfully, they never miss on the card art for Rosé, so this looks fantastic. Um, but, we then get this shot. This right here is Pete. This is where the animation for this guy peaks, is this shot right here. This is also probably the thumbnail. <laughs> but this is definitely where the animation for this guy peaks. This is the best that he gets already in his first super attack. Not even in the transformed. It is such a shame. So you have him lift his arm up here, right? And then tilt his hand to the side, which I will say this shot is pretty cool, right? Of then him kind of leaning down and swiping his hand across the screen to transition into the Keyblade. Now, even though this is clearly his best shot in these animations, of course you know your boy still got a nitpick it and I still got a couple of problems with this. So first of all, for his arm... It does not really look natural in the way that it moves up. They quite literally just shift the PNG up, right? They don't have any animation to like his clothes moving over here or in the way that they're connected, right? Um, you know, right by his shoulder there, right? It just looks like that they have the PNG of his arm sliding upwards, right? And moving over the PNG of Rosé in the background, right? When he's lifting his hand up like this. It does not look natural in the slightest. It looks like the, the Rosé, like, screenshot is in the background. And then his arm is attached to a stick. And somebody's lifting up the stick off screen to make it lift up like that. It's also weird, too, because I think the other thing that bothers me about this is the aura... And the lighting effects are so good, but the um, beginning of the keyblade forming on his hand, right? <laughs> not not the one that Sora uses, not that keyblade. <laughs> the keyblade that Rose uses, right? The sword that actually comes out of his hand. This, like, beginning formation of it around his hand is not moving whatsoever, right? There is no movement on the, like, aura that is surrounding his fingers. There's no movement on the darker crimson aura that is around, um, just like the entire thing, right? That is really weird that it doesn't move. I don't know why they decided to go that route. The hand actually moving into place looks okay, right? Nothing crazy there, I suppose. Um, but again, they don't move the aura at all. Obviously, they move it, like, with the hand in terms of it turning, but it's not animated, right? It's not, like, you know, moving around like, obviously, the aura in the background is. So then you get to this shot from the side. I will say, some people did point out, which is kind of funny, it almost looks like his hand is cut off here, but I think that's honestly just because of, um, the way that it looks, right? When it comes to, um, you know, the, like, darker bottom part of the aura, and then obviously they show, like, the cuff of his sleeve there. It just kind of looks like that. I think that's more an optical illusion than it is the actual animations, but just something to point out. So... It's really interesting because, again, this looks like that it should be animated because they just have, like, that little, like, sploosh at the top of the aura for his hand there that just kind of stays there, right? Like, when I was watching this, I was like, oh, that's going to start moving around any second now, right? Because, obviously, the whole point is the aura is supposed to be crazy and dynamic. And this honestly looks like it's mid-motion on this, you know, PNG for um, the aura that is surrounding his hand, right? But, no. They just transition it into this, which to be fair, this shot does look really cool, right? Like, I can't deny that this shot definitely looks good. But again, they don't animate the aura whatsoever on it. This shot also is pretty cool. But I will say, I do like the way that they have this transition, right? With um, having the hand, you know, kind of get closer up to him. And then they blur it, obviously, to represent the motion blur as it moves across the screen. And I guess they technically animated here, but I think it's more so just doing the same thing they were doing just in quicker succession with having the aura change shape as the hand moves across the screen. 
But this is a pretty cool transition. Obviously, then transitioning into this animation here. I do like the fact that as well, they kind of have... Uh, did the sword change? Huh. We'll have to see if it does that when we look at the anime comparison. I do not remember it changing the curvature like that. Regardless, though, it is cool that they have the little bit of, like, you know, aura kind of surrounding it before it dissipates, right? And then they show the actual blade, which thankfully is animated, and that does look pretty cool. And, of course, we then get into one of everybody's favorite scenes with Rosé, right? I will say, by the way, you know I'm not usually a fan of cuts, but this is actually a pretty decent cut because, obviously, it's believable that Rosé is standing in front of this building. And then when you cut away, you're looking at the front of it, and he's very far away from it. So I actually think this is a decent cut. I'm not going to lie. So we then have him come through and spin. Um, yep, this is another sliding PNG moment, right? There is absolutely no movement on my boy. No minimal movement on the legs, arms, on the hair, right? Nothing like that. Um, it is quite literally just a PNG that's sliding across the screen. Very, very, you know, couple years ago, Dokkan essay-esque, right? Definitely not something that you should be seeing in a modern 2024 essay. There's no way that something should be like this in here. This is unacceptable. This is from, like, the era of AGL Zamasu. <laughs> this is something that you would be seeing in that essay, or maybe even a little bit earlier, right? In terms of how this looks with the PNG sliding. So, this is a pretty decent transition, I will say. From this expression to this one, right? I like that they actually choose to do this rather than just cutting, right? Because obviously you're up next to his face and then he turns his head. So it's kind of a little bit more like believable, I guess. Um, I definitely like that quite a bit. But we then have this shot of Rose spinning around and firing off the bits of the blade, right? Which I know that uh, this shot has definitely been a little bit like controversial when it comes down to it because obviously this is such a cool scene um, in the anime. Here's what I think, right? I think that the spin at the beginning, it's all right, looks pretty good, right? I think that the effects at the beginning start off strong and even these look okay, right, with the little bits. But I think where they fall off is they take this like lighter pink and make it look like this, which is like not as close to the anime. And it also kind of like sticks out like a sore thumb a lot more. It feels a lot less natural, right? Um, not to mention, it definitely does kind of feel like that for all of these effects, they just kind of pasted it on top of it rather than, right? Because like these look so much better than these, right? Like these are two completely different key blast effects in the way that they're, they look visually, right? I don't know why they decided to change that man through again. Maybe it does look like that in the anime. We'll see in a second after we watch through this full animation. But here's the thing, right? Obviously, when it comes to stuff like this, right, they can do the best that they can do to make it look a certain way. And sometimes, obviously, it comes out really, really good where you could say, yeah, it looks like that a character is firing a key blast. And you could definitely still say that here, like, yeah, you know, if you're just looking at this in layman's terms, it looks like a character is firing a key blast. But when I'm looking at this, it basically just looks like they pasted a bunch of PNG effects on top of Rosé and tried to make it look like the fact that he was firing a bunch of blasts, right? I think that the big difference is sort of that level of immersion, right? When you watch an animation and you think to yourself, wow, that's Goku Black firing off a bunch of key blasts to fight back against Goku. Or you look at an animation and go, oh, that's Goku Black with a bunch of effect PNGs pasted on him that they're trying to emulate him throwing a bunch of key blasts. I think it's when you make that jurisdiction that an anime is not, or an anime, an animation rather, excuse me, is not that good, right? Or at least could use some work, I think would be the better thing to say. I do like this little transition here, right? Where they kind of have the pink approach the screen. And then they have it cut to um, all of the little, um, you know, key blasts like fly into Goku. That is pretty cool. I will say, I don't know how this is going to work on other sprites. Obviously, most characters in the game are this size. So, of course, it makes sense that they're going to do it like this. But I don't know how this is going to work for like... Chaozu? <laughs> I'm assuming like some of these blasts probably won't even hit him or you know someone like Cell Max, right? I don't know uh, how this will actually look when it comes to the different sized characters in the game like that, but I digress. That part does look okay. 
right? I think that they did a pretty good job of actually doing this despite the sprite being the stinky sprite. Um, they did a good job of having like the actual like blast stick in there, right? And then after that, right, you do have him whip around and fire off one more. No, I forgot about that. He then brings it around to the sword. That's right. It kind of looks like that he fires off one. It almost looks like he fires off like an invisible one right there, but no. He's bringing it back around into the sword, and then of course that's when you get the little explosion, which I love the pink explosion. That is very cool. Now, here is what I wanted to show you for this animation, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at iKevinX's anime versus Dokkan comparison. This is one of the things that we actually have in the comparison um, because he used like the promo trailer that they showed in the um, in the thing, right? So um, let's actually look at this in slow mo because I think it's going to be a little bit easier um, to like fully digest it. And obviously, we are mainly here for the part where he flips around, right? But um, and, of course, this is a little bit more difficult because, of course, like I said, I, Kevin X was working with the promo video. Um, I don't know why he didn't use the, um, I think they showed the essay on the side. I'm not sure why he didn't use that, but maybe it was just like he saw the promo trailer in the beginning and just got to work. Because <laughs> I think that's what happened. He literally said, all right, I saw the animations. I'm on it. <laughs> My boy always cooking as soon as possible. So that would not surprise me if he just completely missed it, which is kind of awesome. I'm not going to lie. I appreciate the dedication, right? Yeah, so that's a pretty cool transition to like start us off, right? Um, when it comes to comparing the Dokkan and the anime one. So then I believe we get um, a little bit of a side-by-side -side here. Yeah, so I will say, very nice job, Dokkan. They do do this occasionally, right? Fixing how the character's face looks. Goku Black's eyes are way too far apart in the anime version. They were not cooking with the way they animated that boy's face. Maybe if you looked at that from like 50 feet away, like if I stood in the other corner of my room and looked at that, it wouldn't look that bad. But yeah, his eyes look way too far apart in the anime version. So it's nice to see that for the facial expression, Dokkan is still doing that where they're cooking on it. Um, and not to mention, even, like, the, uh, the look that he gets when he brings the, um, key down here, right? I think they definitely improved on the look of the eyes. Obviously, um, a lot of people discuss nowadays the quality of the animation when it comes to Dragon Ball Super, right? I think as Dragon Ball Super went on, you know, the animation definitely got a lot better. Um, I mean, especially since the revival of F Saga, there was the actual Dragon Ball Super one. We don't even want to talk about that. Or Episode 5 from Battle of Gods, for that matter. I almost forgot about that. But, like, the Tournament of Power, I think, definitely, like, in terms of the quality, looks a lot better than the Goku Black arc. But, I know, in the modern day, in retrospective, looking back on Dragon Ball Super, a lot of people, like, really dog on the quality, which I can't necessarily blame them, especially looking at something like this, right? Um, which, it, don't worry, it'll only get worse as we look at more Dragon Ball Super clips in comparison to <laughs> Dokkan here. Um, I wanted to see too, so is the key scythe animated? It is. You can see that the scythe is actually animated, right? You can tell, like, they're taking from specific frames, right? Like here, you can see the little swoop that's, like, close to his mouth there. Um, that is what they're taking from for this particular still, but, yeah, you can tell that... Look at that, the key is actually animated on the, um, on the anime version. And to be fair, I guess the anime version does kind of, like, get to the hand sweep a little bit quicker, it kind of seems like. But regardless, though, still. Also, interestingly enough, the anime does it a little bit differently where you actually don't see Rosé at all when he swipes his hand, right? Which I kind of think is a little bit better for the continuity of the swipe, but... Regardless, though, okay, so it does change the curvature of the blade. Interesting. I never realized that before. Yeah, no, no worries, my guy. <laughs> no worries, my guy. Um, but, yeah, so obviously this does look pretty good. You can see, even when it comes to, like, the bits of the aura that are kind of, like, flying off there, right? I think they still did a pretty good job of animating that. Interesting, I just noticed he has the aura there for a second. Look at that. In the Dokkan version, he... Even from the beginning? Wait, let's go back to when it, like, first transitions into that. Yeah, he doesn't have the aura at all, and Goku Black still has the aura surrounding his body. Because you can see it on his legs a little bit there before it begins to dissipate, right? You can see it surrounding his leg. They literally just didn't bother animating that. 
Interesting. I mean, I guess it's fine. Because you don't even really see the aura anyway. But still. Also, here's another uh, here's another example of uh, definitely like at least screenshot by screenshot basis. I think uh, Dokkan did it better. Dude, look at that face on my boy Rosé. What were they cooking with? <laughs> this definitely feels like the type of thing where it was a weekly anime so it doesn't look as good. And then when they release the Blu-rays of, you know, like a show, they touch it up a lot. I don't know if they did that for DBS when they released the, blue, uh, the Blu-rays. Um... Somebody in the comments let me know on that, because I'm actually not sure. I know they do that for JoJo, though. Regardless, though, definitely very nice looking shot. Yeah, so, I guess, to be fair, right, that is kind of what they do in the anime, where they have a PNG just sort of slide around. But I feel like the difference is that the anime one, the frame rate looks a lot more fluid, right, in the way that it moves. And the Dokkan version looks a lot more like choppy like let's watch that bit in full-time speed right yeah the anime version just feels a lot more fluid in the way that he moves like that right also interestingly enough the uh the keyblade is like glowing more like you can see the actual like outer glow of it um on the anime version but then when you have the dokkan version it's just like it almost looks like a prop of the Keyblade rather than the actual Keyblade. Something else that's really interesting, by the way, is that I know that the Goku Black arc does look like this in certain sections, but um, in terms of the animation style, but it's interesting that uh, also, again, they improved on the face, I would say, but it's not this like more flat colors. They have a lot more shading on it, right? Like this is basically just one shade here, right? And there's not like really much lighting effect. And even on the hair, you can see, right? Like the colors are a lot more simplistic where on the Dokkan version, even as we transition to here, you can see that, dude, the shading is so much more dramatic on the Dokkan version, which is really interesting. Um, I don't know why they decided to do that, and they didn't make it look a little bit more like the more like flat colors of the anime, or the more simple colors, whatever you would call that. Again, as I always say in these videos, I always like the preference. I don't think I did this time, but I'm not an animator, right? I just look at the funny Dokkan PNGs all the time. I'm a pretty good idea of what makes these animations good. So forgive me if I'm not, uh, you know, up to snuff on my, you know, professional animation terms. But yeah, <laughs> they definitely improved the faces. I have to give Dokkan that. Thank God they didn't keep to the source material for this one because holy moly, dude, that is uh, a little yucky. Uh, I'll just keep adjusting it so it's better for you to see the details. Thank you. I appreciate it, my boy. Yeah, definitely a very, very good job on improving some of that for sure. Um, Goku Black spinning around here, right? Yeah, definitely better than that face for sure. Yeah, so I think here's the big difference when it comes to the anime and the um, Dokkan version of this, right? It is definitely the quality of the or not the quality but like the look of the key right the look of the key in the anime is a lot more transparent it's a lot more see-through right and it looks a lot more like energy rather than these just like globs of goo like this kind of looks like he's throwing like obviously there's a little bit of like noise effect in there right there's a little bit of that like fuzzy static look to it to obviously kind of emulate what the anime is doing but it kind of looks like he's throwing clumps of Majin Buu at him. <laughs> Rather than it being more like energy, right? Or he's throwing like bits of Ditto at him or something. That's why I was saying like when we got to here, this looks so much better than even just a frame before. Because you can tell it looks a lot closer to what the anime was trying to do with that. So then the spin around, right, I definitely think looks really good, right? That I think they did a very good job emulating for sure. And again, they definitely improved on the uh, facial, facial expressions as well. And I think they pretty much nailed the effects for that. Um, so overall, like, pretty decent on this one, right? Um, but, you know, nothing insanely crazy. Moving to our next animation, we have the Key Blast Nullification where we have this very, very simple animation here, right? Where Rosé basically just cuts the key blast in half and it explodes. I know we definitely don't have a comparison for that one because they didn't show that animation in the initial little bit of the animations that they did show. When it comes down to this one, it is so simple, but it also just doesn't really look that good, 
right? Obviously, for these counter animations, they always make them very, very simplistic, very quick. But I don't know, man. I'm not really a fan of this one. You obviously have the small rosé lift up the hand before they zoom into the shot, which to be fair, this asset does look very nice, right? We have rosé bring the aura back, or bring the aura back, bring the sword back rather. And by the way, you're telling me that they could animate the sword here, right? You can see that the key is actually moving properly, but in the close-up shot, that's probably his best looking shot of all the animations. They don't animate it! What? <laughs> Why? Why would you not animate it like that? Either way, though, we have the zoom in and the change of expression. I would have definitely preferred a little bit more, uh, I don't know, transition into the expression. But not only is it kind of funny, I guess it sort of fits Rosé for being absolutely insane for him to just go, ha! <laughs> so, I'm not too bothered by it. But then, of course, they don't really show him actually swiping the attack. We just get the... Is that Super Smash Bros? <laughs> we just get this impact frame here. Um, where obviously it's supposed to imply the slash. And then of course you get it. Um, you know like on the screen. With the key blast cut in half. And quite literally just him sitting in the sky. They do move his arm up a little bit. But it, it is basically just two circles. With a little bit of aura that explodes. I don't know man. I'm not really a fan of this one to be honest. This is very like lame looking in terms of the key blast, right? Like this is the thing that I talk about that they do so good in other animations. This is the opposite of that where they don't make key blasts look lifelike or dynamic where you know you have the energy changing shape and you know the lighting is different and like it's increasing in size and decreasing in size rapidly. They literally just put two circles on the screen, right? They're sliding two circle PNGs across the screen. That's what's happening, right? So it's really nothing insane, right? Um, I guess at least it'll be quick, but it also kind of doesn't make sense depending on the key base super. To be fair, though, that one's a little bit more difficult to get into because obviously when it comes to it, right, it's hard to kind of like give a specific key base super that will work with everybody because obviously sometimes they're firing you know like balls of key right like the rapid firing key blast you know that's vegeta's technique or sometimes it'll be like an actual beam right like in this animation for trunks right it was an actual beam so of course the key is not going to be consistent but definitely is a little bit off-putting excuse me all right so we now move on to the animation of rosé holding out the scythe here, right and this part is pretty cool i think that this is definitely another one of his best animations this is the actual active skill so i like this shot of him holding out the scythe and then they cut in right which i think the cut is fine there i do like that they have the edge of the sickle of sorrow there that is pretty neat um obviously this close-up shot of rosé is nice Oh, you're telling me they can animate this guy's mouth flap, so not the gamma's, okay. <laughs> but, right, obviously this is a pretty cool active skill. And we have Rosé spin around, right, before slashing forward. All right, obviously bringing us the funny opening in the sky, right? Now, before we get to this, right, let's talk about the spin. Um, and not the kind from JoJo. So... When it comes to this animation, I don't think it's too bad. I still feel like there should be some in-between frames, to be honest. I feel like it's not as fluid as it could be, but it's not too bad, especially watching it in full speed. However, why did they use the, like, farther away art style for some of this, right? You can see that here, it's a lot more detailed than it looks like a closer up asset, right? Even when they get to here. And here, to an extent, right? But then when they get to a little bit farther, right, like basically right after this, why are they using this quality here when he's so close up? Why would they use the smaller looking sprite quality, especially here, right? And not to mention here, this looks like earlier story assets when you would have the characters talking to each other, like towards the beginning of the game's quest mode when they were like having the, you know, images of the characters talking to each other. I don't know why they decided to do this quality rather than doing some higher quality assets for this section. Does that make sense to me? I will say, I do like the, uh, I don't know if this is a detail that anybody noticed, but the the sound effect there, that's kind of cool that at the end they have that little mark 
to kind of like extend the H, right? Whether that's because of like the, the fwish sound from him spinning or, you know, like the heat from the energy that's going to open it up, right? I kind of like that almost like visual extension of the effect. I do think that that is really, really cool. But we then have this section where the key obviously um, covers the screen. I think this is a great transition, by the way, where it gets closer and closer before they have the actual like blast kind of envelop it and immediately transition into this. Now, you're probably going to look at this next section, right? I don't know if too many people will think much of it, but... When it comes to this, right, of the, like, smoke coming out of the actual cut in the sky, that section looks insanely good, if I'm being honest with you. This entire section here, right, looks insane. And the reason why is because, obviously, we had the data download last night, and funny enough, looking at the assets for this, most of Rosé's assets in the way that they do the, like, asset sheets and the stuff that makes up the animations is very much so in the style of some essays from a couple of years ago, right? It's a lot of um, different parts that, you know, they put together to then make the animation. However, for this specifically, it is straight up a slideshow. They do the funny slideshow technique where they basically just have the entire screen, right? Like, what will be displaying on the screen as a PNG, and they just rapid play it. Why they chose that for this section of all things as a matter of fact let me show you i pulled up the google drive of the assets from this particular animation and if we look around right you can see that obviously there's a bunch of different parts that make up rose another thing that i find really interesting about these is if you do scroll through this entire thing there are a bunch of solid renders which it's funny because it's like, it's cool that you have like these individual renders, I guess, for using for thumbnails and creative projects and stuff like that. But when it comes to the Dokkan essays, that's a bad thing because that just means there's a lot more, you know, like static PNGs, sliding PNGs, all that type of stuff. You want to see all the pieces separate. But what I was just talking about, right, with obviously the smoke, you can see here, right, they do the funny slideshow effect where... It's basically just, you know, a bunch of PNGs that they play rapid fire to then emulate the smoke, right? Where you can see that, right, even obviously that one is like the, um, you know, whole opening in the sky, right, type of thing where they play it over and over and over where this kind of looks like the same thing. But if you look at this in close detail, the details change very, very minusculely, which is, again, because what they're doing is they're, you know, just literally rapid firing, playing it as a slideshow to make this effect look really good with the, like, smoke kind of dissolving around the cut in the sky. So I just thought that that was interesting because the rest of the essay, um, or essays, rather, I should say, is, again, like a bunch of different separate parts, right? A lot of already, you know, like, solid-made PNGs, but... For some reason, for the, and I mean, for some reason being that they wanted to make it look good, I'm sure. But as we scroll through here, you can see that for, you know, a lot of the parts where they open up the, like, you know, cut in the sky. And obviously for the smoke, um, they, they have the slideshow technique. So, I don't know why they decided to do it for that and not the rest, I will say, right? Because it, that doesn't really make sense to me. But I just thought that this was interesting to point out as why this is the case. Why this particular section looks so good. Regardless, though, going back to it, we then have the smoke billow up to the sky, which I do think that that looks pretty cool, right? And then, of course, we have the formation of the boys. Now, these guys do quite literally just slide down like this. This is definitely going to be a new meme in the community. And... I don't really have a problem with this section, right? Because I don't really know how else they would have executed this particular part, right? Um, funny enough, I don't know if uh, he'll be right there, but I know for a fact... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it is literally just a PNG that they copy and paste a bunch of times, and then just kind of have him slide down, which is a little funny, but... I don't really know how else they would have done this scene, so I suppose it looks fine. We'll compare it to the anime version, obviously, in a second. But then we transition, which I actually really like that they do that bit of um, the like fade to black rather than just cutting. That is very nice to see they actually did include that, right? And then, of course, we have this shot of all of the boys standing in front of the hole in the sky with the main Goku Black in the background. Now, before we do the anime comparison for this, by the way, the sprite is absolutely hilarious <laughs> for this guy. <laughs> just looks so funny. By the way, this team that they're using in the preview is just like, what? <laughs> My boy Kaioken Goku, version Z Goku, with like 
five other Goku Black Roses. So funny, man. So, this was another tweet that I wanted to bring up from the boy Matt, right, when it comes down to it. And you'll see this particular shot in a little bit, but the point still stands, right? This is very strange to me. And this also kind of, like, I don't know, sort of uh, really makes me think more that these essays were made a long time ago like i have no like actual proof of that right the only evidence that i have is just how they look and some of the techniques that they've used and some of the things that they've done but look at this we're in 2024 and they have seriously used idle sprites in the most important super attack animation of the newest non-premium lr unit yeah so if we go back and look at this shot before we get the boys pulling up on the sprite. They quite literally used the actual Dokkan sprites. You know how we talk about like the stinky sprites all the time? Yeah. They didn't make new assets for that. They literally just used the stinky sprites for this, right? And not to mention later, um, right? Obviously, it's here in this shot, right? And you can see later on in this animation right obviously then they're there too it looks a little bit better in the beginning right where it kind of looks like they animated them like that but obviously uh, as this goes on right you will see that um it indeed does not look uh that good <laughs> where they have the uh the sprites pulled up right here this is the shot that i was wanting to talk about right it's kind of funny because now that i look at this right again in detail with this one, actually, because I was going to say these don't look like the stinky sprites to me, but I knew I saw that in the animation. They actually animated them, like, as regular characters. Like, with proper-looking animations for this one, right? Like, they look normal, right? Like, they look more in place. Granted, to be fair, with a little bit of style difference, Rosé definitely does look um, a little out of place compared to his clones. Like, I swear the art style is a little bit different between them and his clones. But they certainly look... A lot better, right, than later in the essay right here, where they obviously just use the stinky sprite version. Let's actually pull it up uh, using Matt's post here, right, where we have this one, right, and then um, let's go to the one after the transformation occurs, right? So, yeah, you can see the difference there, right, that these ones look like the proper assets how they should, and then they use the funny sprite version for this one, right? They look vastly different in their shape, you know, the posture, obviously, this is the more generic look, right? Obviously, the face looks different, even the coloring on the hair to an extent. So why? That I don't understand. What is the point of doing this when they have this already? They could have literally just reused the assets from this section for this part. And they even do that for some of it, right? I believe that Rosé's expression here, if you look closely on this section, right? When we go back, his expression is a little bit different, right? So it's not exactly the same, right? He's just standing there smiling, right? Where when we then go to the super attack version, you can see that he has the smirk on his face. But why? They, they do this all the time where like when they're transitioning from where a transformation animation has the tail end of what then becomes the beginning of the super attack, right? They just reuse the assets. Why would they not do that here? And they use the inferior option. It's absolutely insane to me. And frankly, this type of thing is unacceptable in a 2024 animation, right? And I know that sometimes, you know, it becomes a conversation in the community when people talk about the animations that they're not the best quality of, you know, oh, well, we should just be happy with what you got or you should stop complaining or, you know, whatever the case may be. And I like to critique these, obviously, from the most critical standpoint that I can when it comes to looking at these animations. But the reason why I complain and critique is because i care i want these to look better i want these to look the best that they can and so seeing stuff like this just makes me really disappointed and not to mention above all else right and something that i see people mention time and time again which should be brought up 
is that this is a multi-million dollar company, right? And a multi-million dollar video game. As crazy as that is to think, Dokkan makes millions and millions, billions even, right? And that's not even an exaggeration, right? That is just true. <laughs> like, even this celebration is lo alone, right, has made so much money. The anniversary I'm talking about on JP, right? Has made so much money alone that like any company would like cry from happiness of how much they made on this celebration just by itself. So the fact that they can't take that insane like even unfathomable amount of money that they make and put more quality effort time right. Maybe manpower if necessary right maybe they need more people working on the team I'm not sure. To be able to ensure that these animations are as top-notch quality as they should be, right, is imperative. And should honestly be a bare minimum requirement considering how much money they make. They have so much money that they could easily make every animation an absolute banger, right? Making every animation look like it's either exactly from the anime or if it's a Dokkan original thing, you know, making it look as good as possible. There is no reason why we should be getting animations like this in 2024. Absolutely unacceptable. And frankly, it's disgraceful. Dokkan should be ashamed of themselves. I am going that far to say that because this is just ridiculous. And it's the money aspect of it that really is the kicker, right? I wouldn't be saying this if this was Dokkan was a smaller game or, you know, they still make a decent amount of money, but it's not as big. But they make, like, billions of dollars. This is unacceptable. Now, I do want to go back and look at the animation of the active skill compared to the side-by-side -side here. Obviously, before we get into then the super attack um, in more detail. So let's go ahead and look at this here. Um, we have the shot of Rosé obviously holding the Keyblade out. Um, this one does look pretty good, I will say, in the anime version. So um, they did a good job mimicking it in the Dokkan version there. But, right, uh, when it comes down to it, we then obviously transition into the shot of Rosé doing the spin around with the Scythe in a second here, right? Which, to be fair... I guess the frame rate is pretty, um, like, similar, I suppose, to the anime. But I, they still could have improved it, I feel like, in the Dokkan version. Like, you can see it's almost frame for frame in terms of, like, the actual posing that he does. Um, I'm having to trim down the anime to fit to Dokkan. Yeah, so that means that they cut out stuff from the anime version if, you know, he had to trim it down to be able to fit, which is really interesting. Either way, though... Moving on from this section here, um, we then obviously have the part where he launches the actual energy forward, right? Um, much like the Gamma's Dokkan held on to this bit to replaying the effect three times to make it last longer. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, because I know we saw that with the Gamma's where some of the effects um, were kind of replayed to sort of like extend the animation a little bit. Or I almost thought like it was an error or something like that. But very, very interesting, right? Yeah. They replay it a lot more than the anime does. We never see the rift appear in the anime. If you look closely, you will notice the inside of the rift is different because it takes from a different scene. The darkness inside, though it's a very complicated effect to reference in Dokkan. Interesting. I actually did not know that. I've always just kind of like thought of the rift in this like pink fashion, but I guess that's just because I'm so used to seeing it in Dokkan, right? Yeah, in this scene right here. Very interesting. Yeah, that is definitely like a complicated effect to emulate. It doesn't surprise me that it doesn't look as crazy as the anime. It still looks really good, but like that effect is just insane. I, I cannot imagine what the animators were um, <laughs> going through trying to make that. But yeah, we then obviously have the smoke, right? Because the smoke is at a different angle in the anime version um, when we obviously have the clones come out. And the same thing here too. It's at a bit of an angle in the anime. So how does it look? This is the part that I'm really curious about when the boys come down. Okay, so it is basically the same. Yeah, more or less the same thing. Interesting. Goku Black doesn't have this pose in the anime. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. I actually did not know that. Yeah, so... Oh, that's right, because he's standing like this when the clones are there. Huh. I actually did not remember that. That is really interesting that he doesn't have that pose with the scythe. Well... I think that is definitely cooler in the Dokkan version. It obviously makes a little bit more sense because I feel like that kind of keeps the continuity a little bit more, right? Alright, so let's move on to the super attack now, 
right? Obviously, we have the uh, stinky sprites pulling up here, right? Definitely um, not good. <laughs> I will give them this. I will give them this. The way that they pan across the shot is very well done. You can see that the effects are in full force here, right? And they kind of get a little bit more blurry and more like in focus as it's kind of going out like this too. They do do a good job of perspective though, where they kind of make it feel like that Rosé gets a lot more farther and farther away. And these guys get a lot more smaller in the way that they are, right? And I think it's because they kind of space them out a little bit more. And you can see like these guys kind of get a little bit closer, right? It's not just they're static in the positions that they're already in. They actually are moving them slightly, but your eyes can't really detect them. So it just looks a lot more like they're moving into place. That is a pretty cool little effect. That feels very cinematic, I will say. All right. And also, it doesn't really make sense with the way that they're looking. Why are they looking directly at each other, right? Obviously, it makes a lot more sense um, for them to just kind of be like looking ahead at the viewer rather than them, um, you know, looking at each other. But obviously, that's because these are the stinky sprites, right? So, all things considered, at least the sprites don't last on the screen for too long before we get to some better animation. We have this shot, which I think this is pretty cool. This is a pretty crazy, um, like, immediate jump, I guess you would say. Like, obviously, it's kind of a cut, but it's more like a jump, I would guess you would say. Um, but they do a great job of this because obviously this happens so quickly, right? You have the two rosés there and then the boys flying in from the back, right? Which they then kind of linger on a little bit more, right? Before they then have them zoom towards the screen. And interestingly enough, they don't actually show the boys in the back um, pull up, which is kind of interesting. But if you're looking at this, right, even in the slow-mo, right, this happens very, very quickly with that shot of it going, right, the little boom. I want to see how this looks in actual um, one-time speed, right? Let's see. Yeah, it looks really good with them basically just exploding forward. That part is pretty cool. Let's see. What about in two-time speed? Yeah, definitely, like, very quick, which makes a lot more sense and obviously feels a lot more fluid in the way that it looks. Alright, so, oh boy, this section's going to be a little bit of an interesting one to discuss. So, we have the shot, obviously, after the boys fly forward, right? And we have this shot of Rosé kind of elongated here, which is pretty cool, right? You guys know I love this bit of perspective. Following this, we obviously have him zoom forward, and oh! What is that? Minimal movement that isn't there in the beginning, but it then gets there. You can see his hair flowing in the wind now. And the bottom of his um, gi, right? The top half, moving a little bit there, right? Why they decided to finally kick it in now, I don't know. But it doesn't get much better than that because it only gets worse. <laughs> we then have this part where it's basically just a bunch of PNGs flying at Vegeta. This part is uh, not great. To be honest, I guess at least for some of it, they have a little bit of fall through, right? You can see actually like moves his fist, but man, this is just sliding PNG city. Are you kidding me? This looks terrible. This is not a 2024 Dokkan essay. Looking at this section, right? At least for the final one, they have a little bit of movement on them, a little bit of minimal movement, right? And they do blur them as the punch goes through. Also, the effects, whenever they actually hit, are, like, you know, simple but effective. This, uh, like, I am convinced watching this section of the animation. I'm, like, honestly a little flabbergasted that I'm looking at this in 2024. Uh, like, this is the best they could do? This is the best that they could do. Really. Th this is all they had in them. They didn't have one more in them. This is disgraceful. This looks like a free-to-play animation. This is a free-to-play card. <laughs> this animation right here is like a free-to-play unit. Even some modern free-to-play units look better than this. Let's see how this looks in actual normal speed. Now, obviously, when it comes down to it, these rapid-fire things will always look a little bit quicker like this. But it still kind of just feels like lame. It still feels like it could have definitely been a lot better. It almost kind of reminds me of like an old like flash animation, right? Obviously in the two times speed it looks a little bit better, but it still doesn't look good. 
It's kind of hard to tell what's happening in the two times speed because it just happens so quickly like that. But I don't know, man. This is just not good. Like, I don't think there's any sugarcoating it for this section. Obviously, some animations have good things, some have bad, right? There's sections that I'm like, oh, you know, this is better than others. This is bad. <laughs> this is, like, actually bad. There is no other word to describe this section but bad. So, we then go on to the card art, which, by the way, again, at least the card art is fantastic. They definitely did a good job cooking with that. We have this shot here of Rosé readying the scythe before swinging it forward um you can see here that they do again kind of do an interesting transition between the lower quality and higher quality assets right here obviously it's a little bit more of a higher quality one and then they kind of slowly degrade it a little bit from this one to then this one um, which is really interesting that that's like kind of the decision that they chose to make and again i feel like here when it comes down to it they definitely should have um like added a couple more frames because I still feel like the swing of the key blade is a little bit um I don't know a little bit choppy right but once he obviously swings it forward they do have a nice transition on the screen which is very akin to how it was when it actually transformed but this time we get the little bit of the white explosion with then of course all the boys look in there and again by the way stinky sprites once more these are the sprites that they're using. They don't have, like, actual assets for these guys. They're just the sprites that Dokkan has been using for years for the clones. It's ridiculous. This explosion looks good, at least. This obviously shot from the back of Rosé does look pretty nice, right? Um, very simple. And that is another thing that I noticed about these animations, by the way. Funny enough, um, this was something that I talked about in... Um, Oh, what animation analysis video was it recently? I think it was the Gammas that I was talking about where I was like, oh yeah, like, they barely ever actually hit the enemy. They kind of, like, swing their attack towards the enemy or their fist or their kick, and then they have an effect play on the screen where it then, like, flashes white or it's an impact frame, and then it shows the results of the hit rather than showing the actual attack landing. That is definitely very present in uh, a bunch of these animations for Rosé, and that um, also got brought to mind here with um, this one, right? Where, with the actual, like, scythe, right, he swings it forward, but you don't actually see it um, make contact with the enemy. That was also present in the, uh, the key nullification animation as well. Very, very interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look at this animation here with the end, right? Obviously, looking at the actual super attack version now um, of this animation is what we want to see. Um, again, very interesting. I do like, by the way, I forgot to mention this. This was actually something that I did quite like. I like that they haven't kind of changed the expression here. That is pretty cool, right? I feel like they didn't even need to do that, but it's also those unnecessary things that I always love when it comes to these Dokkan animations, right? Because they could have just had him smiling, but I love then he gets that, like, sadistic look on his face as he looks up. And the animation for the transition looks really good, so that is definitely very, very cool. But obviously, once again, we pan out and see the stinky sprite boys pulling up, right? Oh, man. It's just so disappointing. It is honestly so disappointing, right? All right, so again, that shot is pretty cool, right? Again, with obviously the clones. Interesting that they sort of added more of them. I see you, Dokkan. Oh, interesting. They added that animation there. Okay, that's cool. That's interesting to take from obviously a different section um, of the actual like fight. Well, a completely different fight, more like it. Not a stinky sprite moment because it's. Wait, did he? <laughs> no way! Did I, Kevin X, include that for me? Did he include calling it a stinky sprite moment because of me? I swear that's an Easter egg for me. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, I Kevin X, for the go. Nah, -uh, because it's only the aura blocking the view. It's the same pose. Fair enough. Fair enough. My boy got me there. That you can't see the sprite being a little bit more stinky because the aura is blocking it in this shot. I'll give my boy that. I'll give him that. <laughs> That's awesome. I did not expect that. I'm really glad that term "stinky sprite" moment uh, is spreading around a lot more. Sliding PNG alert. Yeah. Look at how, like, oh my gosh. So, first of all, oh my gosh, what is wrong with Goku's face? <laughs> Again, this is a little bit more uh, DBS animation uh, being funny, you know, at our hands here. But look at how close up this is. This shot is so much more close up 
Then obviously this like rapid fire bit of attacks. Is the whole thing going to be like that? Okay, so then they combine that shot, which is regular Rosé. That's not the clone Rosé. Interesting. My gosh, I forgot how stinky DBS looks. Be speaking of stinky. Dude, oh my gosh, speaking of stinky. Look at Vegeta's face there. Yeah, that, that I can see how that's a little bit of a stretch. But I mean, you know, it looks close enough, I suppose. Very interesting how they strung together a bunch of different scenes. Um, oh, where he comes down and kicks him there. Very interesting how they strung together a bunch of different scenes to kind of make the clone attacks. Some of it being clone attacks and some of it being... Oh! Some of it being actual Rosé, to finish my thought there. That's really interesting. So, like, the kick and then Goku following through with the punch, or Goku Black, rather, following through with the punch after that kick, they use as a separate attack for a different clone Rosé. That's really interesting. It's really interesting, huh? Okay. So I'm curious to see the end then. How does this compare to the anime version? Yeah, the anime version definitely looks a little bit more interesting. How huh, this is interesting. The Goku Black animation is from when he creates the scythe, but the effect is the same from the domain active skill. They smash them together. That is cool. That is pretty cool. I like when Dokkan does creative decisions like that. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so then obviously we have the shot of this, right? I said before that we don't see the rift opening, but we see closing. Don't come play this animation in reverse back there. Interesting. It's more of an impact frame here. The shapes are the same. Yeah. Again, literally, like, that is an effect. Because it's so funny, right? Like, Dokkan has so many cool things where they do a fantastic job of emulating some of these insane effects from the anime. This came out of nowhere, though. Interesting. I guess it's more so just to, like, emphasize the, um, you know, the attack. Oops, I did not mean to click that video. To emphasize the attack, um, you know, kind of, like, hitting the enemy there. What I was going to say is it's really interesting that, um, you know, Dokkan has, like, over the years definitely improved on doing some of the more crazy effects that are present in the Dragon Ball anime, but even with everything that we have now and the technology and how good the quality of the animations are for a lot of the really big boy units, right? It's still interesting that there's still some stuff that they can't emulate, um, that they still don't have like the technology or the power to do, and obviously it's kind of held back by the fact that the game's like, you know, system, the infrastructure of the game is really old so it's hard to emulate something like this in pngs it would be possible i suppose definitely with the slideshow effect but still right and not to mention i guess this is just a little bit of an unfortunate aspect of this but because this guy's essays clearly don't have the amount of quality that they could um it's kind of you know pretty clear to see that they didn't even bother to do this because i don't know if it would have been too much work or um too much time or effort or money or whatever the case may be right i i don't know um but they definitely could have done the slideshow technique because obviously we saw that they did that before um and interesting this is actually not any particular scene from before oh i guess that makes sense it's kind of blocked by the other uh, gamma thing but you can see that he has the same pose there yeah actually here is it the same uh let's just go back there yeah oh interesting two different angles as well that they kind of take from let me go back to that shot. Yeah. When he's looking... That's right. When they're both looking at the... Um, <laughs> both looking at the uh, the rift in the sky. Because Vegeta's like, dude, where did that come from? And he's like, I have no idea. The explosion isn't this one. It's close, though. Yeah, that is definitely pretty close. Very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. I'll upload this while waiting for the mobile version. If uh, by chance there's one, I'll probably think of something else. Um... He could always do a remake, but I think uh, at least for this one, right, um, definitely um, the the nice thing was the trailer actually showed the majority of the animations. I think the only thing that wasn't um, present in the trailer um, was the, uh, the key cut animation here. And maybe I think they did take out the part where uh, Goku um, actually gets hit with the blast, like right here. I don't think that was in the trailer, but... 
Um, yeah, this animation right here where he like cuts the key blast in half, I don't think that, that was actually in there. So we got the majority of it. I'm pretty confident with that, that at least, you know, we got basically all of the important stuff. So of course, as per usual, go check out the boy I Kevin X in the comments, well, comment section. Well, probably he might comment on this video because he's been commenting on a couple of my videos lately. So thank you, my boy. And uh, obviously in the description below, I'll link this video, um, and his channel below. Now, with all of that being said, um, before I give my final thoughts on Rosé, I did want to do a little bit of a thought experiment, right? Because we have Int Rosé's animations pulled up here. And I'm not going to watch these in slow-mo, right? We're just going to watch them at regular speed. Shout out to the boy DBZ World as well for letting me use his videos. I just want you to watch these. Because I know, definitely not the 12 key. Like, even though we're obviously playing the 12 keys because we're just going to play all the animations. Disregard the 12 keys because the 12 key is, like, literally one of the worst animations in Dokkan. Just don't worry about it, okay? From the 18 key onward, I know a lot of people have been discussing that they felt like that these animations looked better than the Rosé that we just got. Now, I don't think so, right? I think that... Definitely the modern rosé looks better than these, right? You can tell that there is stuff that is still a couple years past when this guy came out in terms of the animations, right? When looking at the new rosé's animations, right? I think that saying that is a bit of an exaggeration, right? Because you can tell watching through these that the quality of animations has certainly improved even if the quality isn't the best on the new one. So I know obviously a lot of people are looking to this animation um, because of course, you know, this is like almost bar for bar. Um, the, you know, the one that, um, besides obviously like the cut downward there, um, you know, bar for bar, kind of like the same similar sort of thing um, to what the new animation was for the transformed essay, right? Obviously the one with the clones here. Um, now, it is interesting because I do actually like the way that the clones form in a lot better than I do in the, like, new one. Because, um, obviously, they just kind of appear. Um, I like that effect. Also, I'm wondering if that little smirk that he does in the Super Attack version is a reference to this shot right here. I would have to assume that it is. I don't know if he actually does that expression in the anime. Someone would have to find that. But it would be funny if they were just referencing the old essay. So, with that being said, right, I think it is pretty clear to see that they did obviously still improve on the animations right since then um there are a lot of things right obviously the quality of the assets right the movement that is present in them right the actual like you know a little bit more minimal movement here and there that they have right the overall look being a lot more anime-esque right i think that it's clear that they still improved since then however I think the main point to make here with these animations is that for a 2024 animation, right? This is not up to snuff. This is absolutely unacceptable, frankly, as far as I'm concerned when it comes to some of these animations, right? Obviously, some of them are better than others, right? I think easily his worst animation is the the super attack nullification with the key one, right? Personally, I would honestly say that I like the regular 12 key, right? Like the untransformed 12 key more than I like the transformed 12 key, to be honest with you. Uh, it's just the entire sequence of the transformed key or transformed key transformed super attack rather um, It's just not great from the stinky sprites being present everywhere to like the rapid fire attacks Just literally being a bunch of sliding PNGs I think that the first essay is more consistently good and it still has a bunch of problems with it, too even with that being said I am um, I don't want to say this because this is kind of uh, like a what is the reverse stamp of or the reverse stamp of approval right like the reverse of a gold star type of thing um just like a big boy disapproval from me 
I almost wonder if this guy is going to become, oh, I don't want to say it, the AGL Kale of this year. Oh, no! <laughs> Obviously, you guys know how much I've dogged on AGL Kale in the past. This unit kind of almost gives me, like, the same sort of vibes. I would still put this guy above AGL Kale in terms of the animations, for sure. Um, but I think that the overall quality, right, it is extremely apparent that these could be so much better, right? These could absolutely be 10 times better than they already are. And it really makes me wonder why this is the case, right? Why are these animations, you know, not up to snuff with the modern animations that we've seen? And obviously, right, when it comes down to it, of course, it's not going to be the same quality as like the brand new, you know, uh, anniversary animations that we've just seen, right? Like Gogeta, Broly, Gohan Beast, and the Gammas, right? Of course, he's not going to be as high quality as that because those are anniversary units and LRs, right? I understand that. But there is still a standard and a level of quality that should be kept. And this is way under the bar, right? If you showed me that these animations came out a couple years ago, I would believe you. Because these do not look like 2024, 2023, even 2022 animations, right? These look way, way older than that. So it's a real shame that they honestly did this man so dirty considering how long we've been waiting for, um, you know, a new Rose. I saw somebody say that it kind of feels accurate that the like leftover budget that they had um, from worldwide, right, where they were going to make a Goku Black, they had like, you know, a couple dimes left and they're like, all right, let's scrounge something together and make the boy. <laughs> I don't know. It really makes me wonder why these animations turned out this way. Like, is it because... It's a global first for some reason. I don't think so because that really doesn't make any sense to me. There's no reason why they shouldn't just look as good as a normal Dokkan Fest unit should look, right? Just because they're coming out global first. That doesn't make any sense to me. And obviously they're coming out to JP, right? They make these animations, right? Where, you know, they then port them over to the other versions. So, you know, it's going to look the same on JP, so I don't think that that's the case. Is it because the teams were working on the anniversary units at the same time as this guy, right? Is that why these animations look so subpar, right? Is it just because they were working on other bigger, better things for the rest of the year? You know, I really don't know. It will be very interesting to see as the year goes on um, how the animations for standard Dokkan Fests look right? Because I know that over the past year, it has definitely felt like that the quality of the TUR Dokkan Fest animations have really fallen off, right? It feels like that a lot of the animations for the really big boy units, right, worldwide and anniversary are like so incredibly amazing. And then you have the regular Dokkan Fest really falling by the side. And I was really hoping that that would improve this year. But this guy sets a very scary and very dangerous precedent for the rest of the year. It's crazy that we have the animations like Gogeta and Broly, right? And then obviously to a little bit of a lesser extent, but still obviously extremely good. The Gammas and Gohan Beast, right? And then we have this guy <laughs> as the you know, first units of this year, right? And this guy is, like, way below them, right? Like, if we're putting them on the tier list, we got, like, you know, Gogeta and Broly, right? Like, Broly S, right? Like, probably then Gogeta right after him, then maybe in A, right? Like, Beast, then in A or B, right? And then the Gammas in, like, C, right? Something like that, right? And then we have my boy all the way down in, like, F, <laughs> like, or, or whatever would be under that. I don't want to say Z tier, because that's a little bit too extreme. But, like, you understand what I'm trying to say. I feel like that these animations are absolutely not at the quality that they should be. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, because I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this one. It will definitely be interesting to see what kinds of animations we get going forward and the level of quality that we get as the year progresses, considering everything that we have at the beginning of 2024. It's certainly going to be an interesting year, I will tell you that much, but... 
Hopefully, in the future, we do get another Goku Black that will have some better animations than this guy. I feel like we say that all the time, and it's just never comes true. Or like, oh, well, you know, these don't look good, but I'm sure the next one will look good. Why does this one not look good? <laughs> I don't understand, man. Thank you so much for watching, though. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And again, please let me know your comments and your thoughts in the comment section below. Again, definitely go check out the boy I, Kevin X. And of course, everything that we looked at in this video will be linked in the description below. I will catch you in the next one. Dokkan Assets out. Right before I was about to begin rendering this video, I noticed that I, Kevin X uploaded a full version of Goku Black's animations. So... Um, we are just going to watch these through. Obviously, I watched through the majority of it in the actual, like, full length of this video. I apologize that, you know, when it came to timing, obviously all I had was the trailer at the time and not this video yet. And now this video is here, but, you know, it's just kind of the shenanigans with YouTube that happens sometimes, bro. So, either way, though, I just want to watch through this one time through and at least put it at the end just so that it's included in this video since I didn't begin rendering the video yet. Anyway... So, let's go ahead and take a deep dive to the things that were not included in the original version, right? Again, obviously, I'm not going to go through this, like, frame by frame like I was in the, the meat and potatoes of the main video. But, um, obviously, I still wanted to include it in this video. That is pretty cool that that could be either one. Yeah, that makes sense to me. You're not supposed to cheap out. I love my Goku Black Aura. Yeah, that's definitely something pretty consistent with um, these animations, huh? It's really weird. That he doesn't actually have the aura in certain scenes, and in other scenes he does. I don't know why they decided to, like, skimp out on that. Very, very weird. Either way, though, what did he say? I wanted to see what he said for this shot. Well, the smoke uh, explosion isn't it. You can't deny the blast shape is similar. But, didn't he fire a key ball? Why did he become a beam? Huh, yeah, I guess it's maybe just the streak that's firing the ball. I suppose that's what they were kind of going for, right? Yeah, so, oh, that's a very different angle than they did in the Dokkan version, right? If we go back to that transformation, very interesting. That angle that they did in the anime would have been a lot better. Yeah, so we obviously saw this before. Now we can fully appreciate the sword effects. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we obviously saw this part before. Um, the anime has more blades. <laughs> Literally unplayable. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, I don't think that part is that big of a deal, obviously. Oh, interesting. It's specifically based off those key blasts that Goku fires. Okay, so... Huh. You're telling me that he actually has the animation of him splitting it in the anime? But they don't in Dokkan? They just cover it up? I mean, I guess it's still kind of like that in the anime, but it looks a little bit more fluid, I would say. All right, so that was basically everything that we didn't get to see in the trailer version of the animations. He did still make a couple of minor changes when it comes to tweaking a couple of things, but I will let you go check that out in the video link in the description below. Of course, on the boy I, Kevin X's channel. Thank you again, I, Kevin X, for always doing these videos and letting me use these for the animation analysis videos. I'm glad that we got to throw this in the end because obviously... Um, I just wanted to see the comparison between a couple of the shots so we didn't get to see in the trailer version. The final thing uh, that I have for you today is, um, uh, I guess people didn't like Goku Black so much. The uh, official global Twitter account has been hacked. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the check mark for uh, them being an official Twitter account has been taken away. And uh, we now have whatever I'm looking at on the screen now. So, uh... I cannot believe that all of this has happened in one foul swoop. Thank you, Dokkan. Very cool.